out in Wisconsin under law. How the strips will prevent drug overdoses. The cold is here and the clouds are around. I'm tracking when we warm up and the return of the sun coming up. And we're taking a closer look at the timeline leading up to the overnight bridge collapse in Baltimore and the first signs of trouble from the ship that hit it. That's all coming up on News 3 Now at 10. The bridge collapse is where we begin. Overnight in Baltimore, the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapsing into the river after a container ship crashed into one of its pillars. Two people were rescued from the water, but six others are presumed dead with a search set to resume early in the morning. The bridge came down just before 1.30 in the morning and initial reports show that the container ship lost its ability to steer and issued a mayday call closing the bridge to vehicle traffic, but construction workers were on that bridge when it collapsed and six of them are feared dead. Chris Van Cleve takes a look at the timeline of the disaster and the last time a similar incident took place. By daybreak, the force of the collision was clear. Pieces of the mangled Francis Scott Key Bridge and crushed cargo containers littered the deck of the dolly. But the first sign of trouble, here, when the lights flickered and went out on board. The giant ship had lost its engine, its electronics, and much of its ability to steer, leaving it on a collision course with the bridge and little time to avert disaster. A mayday call went out as the nightmare scenario unfolded. Michael Kacharski is a former NTSB senior Marine investigator. A losing power as you're approaching a bridge uh, would be just about the worst case scenario. Loaded down with heavy containers, the captain tried to quickly slow down the more than 900 foot long cargo ship by dropping its port anchor. Dark smoke could be seen billowing from its stacks, likely the backup generator coming online. But the ship never regained engine power and it struck one of the two main structural support columns of the bridge. Ben Schaefer is a structural engineer. Once the bridge was struck by a container ship of that size, there's not a bridge that we build, you know, that's any level of economy and efficiency that, that, that's going to survive that. It's happened before. In 1980, during a blinding thunderstorm, a cargo ship slammed into a support column of Tampa's Sunshine Skyway Bridge. A 1,200-foot span collapsed. 35 people were killed. Since then, cargo ships have more than quadrupled in size. In the world of infrastructure system, it's a failure, right? I mean, the, the bridge is gone, the port is closed, people have died. The NTSB is going to have to deal with a lot of debris, but they want to get their hands on the voice and data recorder on board that ship. They're also going to pour over the ship's maintenance records, including reports it may have had an inspection issue with its propulsion system earlier this year. They're also going to look at the design and maintenance of the bridge. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Baltimore. The bridge collapse in Baltimore may have you thinking, what is the state of our bridges in the area? The American Road and Builders Association says Wisconsin has over 1,700 bridges that need repairs. 943 of those are classified as structurally deficient. One of those bridges is right here in Madison, John Nolan, which sees 40,000 or more crossings a day. Is overall nationwide, we have a dire need for infrastructure renewal. And the matter is that it takes a lot of investment and it has to prioritize based on risk assessment. Wisconsin is set to receive over $200 million to put toward needed bridge repairs. Senior infrastructure advisor to President Biden, Mitch Landrieu, was in Madison today to see the new Centro Hispano building. He spoke with us following the news of the Baltimore bridge collapse. Landrieu emphasized why the Biden administration has made such a push on infrastructure throughout Wisconsin and the country. Infrastructure is not sexy but it's necessary. It's like, kind of like air <laughs> that people really, like, don't pay too much attention to, but like you die if you don't have it. Right. And of course, you don't need to think a whole lot, but you can't get to and from work or the church or the ballpark or wherever you're going if the roads don't work. And you can't have economic growth and development. Nobody can make any money. For the full interview with senior advisor Mitch Landrieu, you can find it on our website at channel3000.com. Well, if you've stepped outside tonight, you felt those cooler temperatures, didn't you? Chilly weather returns for just a few days, but the trade-off is 
that it does come with some sunshine, and we can sure use that around here. Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington is on the weather patio tonight with his first worn forecast. Hi, Alex. Hey there, Charlotte. Yeah, it's roaring out here in the patio. Those cold winds ushering in those colder temperatures that we mentioned last night would be here by the time we get to the 10 o'clock show. Certainly a chilly one out there. Doppler track was lit up with green last night. We had a couple flurries during our 4, 5, and 6 o'clock shows, and those flurries have really since scattered out of the area. I saw just a couple out here, but nothing really to mention across the area tonight. And you could probably hear the wind in my mic. Temperatures 30 degrees out here right now in the 20s to the west out towards the Mississippi River. And that's where our weather is coming from. It's coming from the west. When you see our 24 hour temperature change map, pretty colorful. 20, nearly 30 degrees colder than where we were this time last night. And boy, you can feel it really out here on the patio with those breezes. Not used to it out here because we've been so spoiled with such above normal temperatures. We've had wind gusts today, 30, 40 miles per hour. So that really puts a bite in the air, even with temperatures around 30 degrees. You're, what you're going to wake up to, though, on your Wednesday morning, temperatures in the lower to middle 20s. It's going to be a cold one, definitely chillier than what we were this morning. We're going to track when we warm up out of these really cold temperatures. And like Charlotte was saying, when can when will the sun make a return? I'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. Brand new at 10, authorities in Milton are investigating after a man was found with a gunshot wound earlier this evening. Officers were called to the intersection of Plum Street and Larch Lane, where they found the man around 5 o'clock. He was taken to the hospital and we're told his injuries are not life-threatening. Milton's police chief tells us there is no threat to the public. Also new, the Wisconsin Department of Justice is naming the officer involved in a shooting death earlier this month in Janesville. Sergeant Jimmy Holford, the third is on administrative leave while the shooting is being investigated. 52-year-old Andrew Ziegler was shot and killed on March 1st. Police had been called about an armed person and found Ziegler at a home on North Parker Drive. Ziegler's death remains under investigation. The trial into whether DCI Special Agent Mark Wagner endangered the public when he opened fire on Quadron Wilson in Madison more than two years ago continued today. Wagner has been charged with endangering the public for shooting at Wilson as part of a multi-agency arrest operation. Wilson had been wanted for drug-related crimes when agents surrounded his vehicle and attempted to arrest him. Wagner was the first in line in a string of agents and is accused of firing into the car carelessly. Today, DCI agent Brian Volenberg testified, sharing what he saw in Wagner moments after the shooting. He was like shell shook, like he was very, you could tell, um, upset or like in shock of what happened. He had kind of a blank stare on his face. Wilson survived the shooting and is serving a three-year prison sentence after being convicted on two drug-related charges. The Wisconsin Supreme Court delivering a blow to Amazon today. The court agreed with a lower court's ruling classifying some delivery drivers as employees. The original decision came down from an appeals court in 2023. It found that drivers in the Amazon Flex program are a part of the state's employment insurance system. So that means they are entitled to unemployment if they're laid off. This case could now be used to claim many workers in the, quote, gig economy as employees instead of contractors. Governor Tony Evers has signed a bill legalizing xylazine testing strips. He says it's a move that will save lives. Xylazine is an animal tranquilizer, not an opioid, but over the past few years, Wisconsin officials say they've seen it mixed with other opioids. However, unlike Narcan or fentanyl, there are no reversible options that can be used to combat xylazine in a person's system. The governor and other state officials hope these strips will prevent drug users from ingesting something laced with xylazine. The election is officially one week out and voters in Beloit can get a free ride to the polls next week with Beloit Transit. Anyone riding the bus on Beloit routes will not have to pay the bus fare. The free service was approved last week by the Beloit City Council. The polls will stay open until 8 o'clock, but if you're relying on the bus to take you there, know that the bus routes do not start until 8. We're at 5.30 in the morning and run till 6 p.m. at night. So we'll be able to offer free rides from 5.30 a.m. till 6 p.m. 
Free bus rides to the polls will also be offered during the elections in August and November. Former President Donald Trump is coming back to Wisconsin next week. Now, according to his politics, the former president will be in Green Bay on April 2nd for a rally, which happens to be Election Day. The event will be held at the Hyatt Regency and start at 5 p.m. Doors will open at 2. Independent presidential candidate Robert F. Kennedy Jr. announced his selection for his running mate today at a rally in Oakland, California. He chose California attorney and philanthropist Nicole Shanahan, who spent $4 million to fund Kennedy's Super Bowl ad. Listen to Bobby Kennedy in his own words. Take a look at his vision for America. It is a vision that I share too, as I spend the next seven months of my life getting him on each and every ballot in this country. The 38-year-old Shanahan has no prior political experience. She founded and heads an organization that directs funds toward women's reproductive science, environmental causes, and criminal justice reform. More local stories are still ahead tonight at 10. Millions of dollars for UW-Madison to continue its impressive research efforts. Find out where that money is coming from. At Blaine's Farm and Fleet, we get you outdoors because we get you. Whether you're ready to hit the road, tackle the yard, or start a new project, we get you the right products at the right prices. Like 36-pound bags of Estate Crabgrass Preventer, $32.99. 20-pound bags of Blaine's brand Cardinal Songbird Food, $14.99. Rewards members save an extra buck. And five quarts of Blaine's Full Synthetic Motor Oil, $23.99. Just $20.99 for rewards members. We get you outdoors because we get you at Blaine's Farm and Fleet. This is Ford Truck Month with amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks. Make way for the event that only comes around once a year featuring the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Super Duty, the North American Truck of the Year. Get ready and get to Ford Truck Month. Choose Flex Buy on F-150 with 1.9% APR financing for 66 months, plus 2,000 Flex Buy and 1,000 open trade assist cash at your Wisconsin Ford dealer. Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. We do the math, people. For $79, you get all this. That costs over $200 at Walmart, over $300 at Lens Crafters, and over $200 at America's Best. When it comes to value, Stanton Optical is the top bird. With the best service, quality, and prices, Stanton Optical is the best value in eye care. To help you remember, I made this cheer. The value, A, awesome value, L, lots of value, you get two pairs of free eye exam and anti-glare lenses for only $79. Fresh out of Papa Murphy's Kitchen, the limited time triple pet pizza. Uh, actually, it's fresh out of my oven. Dad, it's just an expression. Giant, classic, and mini cup pepperoni? Now that is an expression. Order the triple pep today. Why choose between that new deck you've been wanting and that vacation you've been dreaming about? Get both. A deck that outlasts wood three to one and up to a seven day vacation on one of the top cruise lines or at one of our hundreds of resorts with no blackout date restrictions. Call now or visit the website for your new deck today. The Honda you want is here. Get a great offer on the stylish HRV or the Civic, which car and driver called fun to drive. There's never been a better time to drive in the moment with Honda. Buy online, reserve from select dealers, or hurry into your local Honda dealer today. The Jennifer Hudson Show. From the hit series, Not Dead Yet, it's Gina Rodriguez. You are something special. Plus, I'm in the kitchen with the help of Carla Hall. Child, being on this show is the most fun to On the next Jennifer Hudson Show at 3. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Moving forward. Today, March 26th, is Purple Day, a global effort to raise awareness about epilepsy. I'm wearing purple for my son, Gio, and others we know and love who suffer from this. In fact, about 50 million people around the world suffer from this condition, and it can often go undiagnosed. For many, that means lives with mysterious chronic medical issues that go unsolved. And that can include vision loss, body spasms, and even deadly seizures. For many doctors, trying to diagnose this disease comes down to being aware of the signs. 
the vast majority of seizures are not the classic, what you see on TV, sometimes called grand mal or tonic-clonic convulsions. Um, it's often what brings people to medical attention, but is not typically how people present with seizures. Today, organizations across the country raised awareness for epilepsy and its symptoms. A big boost in research funding for UW-Madison. The university will receive more than $56 million in federal money for research initiatives. It's made possible by a pair of bipartisan bills signed into law earlier this month by President Joe Biden to keep the government funded through the end of September. Of the 56 million, more than half is going toward the Great Lakes Bioenergy Research Center, which is located inside the Wisconsin Energy Institute on campus. That's a huge collaboration across multiple um, bioenergy research centers. So we're part of a consortium. And um, this is one of our signature um, projects at UW-Madison. And we really are looking at using um, for bio making uh, different types of biofuels. The passage of these bills allows the campus to build on its research in several high demand areas. Well, more than $1 billion is up for grabs in tonight's Mega Millions jackpot drawing. Get those tickets ready because here are the numbers. They are 7, 11, 22, 29, 38, and Mega Ball of four. So far, no one, I mean, no one has won the jackpot in 30 consecutive drawings. If there is a winner, they can walk away with 525 million in a lump sum or spread the payments out over 30 years. Well, you know what you could do with a billion dollars? You can buy a whole lot of donuts. Krispy Kreme is expanding its reach. Its donuts will be soon sold at McDonald's. The original glazed chocolate ice with sprinkles and chocolate iced cream filled will go on sale at McDonald's locations later this year. This isn't the first time such competitors have teamed up. Wendy's, for example, brought in Cinnabon to its breakfast lineup earlier this year. Well, let's get another check of the first Warren forecast. Here's Chief Meteorologist Alex Harrington. Hi, Alex. Hey there, Charlotte. I promise colder weather, and my promise is coming true. Cold tonight, chilly on your Wednesday. I do promise you a milder Thursday and an even warmer Friday in the forecast. Let's start off with Doppler track. Remember last night all lit up with green. No showers out there during the four, five and six. We were tracking some snow showers as this weather system started to wrap up and that has since gone as well. Maybe a flurry out there, but no accumulation, no significant precipitation expected overnight. What you can expect the cold temperatures. We got 30 in Madison, 32 in Janesville, but look at out to the west. 25 already in Viroqua. Remember, it's the latter part of March here, and I wasn't thinking that I'd be showing this next graphic here. This is what it feels like, and I was just out on the patio. 24, it felt colder than 24, but it feels like the teens outside. It feels like 11 right now in Viroqua at the end of March. So a taste of winter here, at least temperature-wise, across southern Wisconsin. Here's what you're going to wake up to on your Wednesday morning. We got a 23 in Madison, 27 in Janesville, and 25 in Lone Rock. Plenty of clouds out there, and that's going to be part of our story for your Wednesday. If we can't get these clouds to move out of the area, our temperatures are going to stay in the 30s. If we can sneak a little bit of sunshine, here's our hope here as we head towards 4 or 5 o'clock. Maybe just a few breaks from, let's say, the Wisconsin River Valley over to Madison down to Janesville. We might get into the upper 30s to right around 40. Notice how it's cooler up to the north. Juneau and Adams County, Marquette and Green Lake counties. You got the clouds out there. The sun can't make it through. And since our grounds aren't warm quite enough yet here in the spring, you really need the sun in the early spring spring to boost those temperatures. Now, last night I was also mentioning that the rainfall amounts would be plentiful for areas from Madison and points off towards the east where we had upwards of two inches. Had some friends on our channel 3000 Facebook also saying Monroe you got about two inches of rain but you don't have to go too far off to the west and there was a pretty sharp cutoff. Our friends in southwest Wisconsin didn't get much and they really need the rain too because that's closer to the severe drought conditions. We'll get an update on that as well this week. But I'm an optimist. We've got more rain chances Friday night going into Saturday. I'm actually going to boost those chances up here as I work on the forecast for tomorrow. And then I'm probably going to increase those chances a bit more for Monday and Tuesday of next week as another wet weather system moves towards the area. Bottom line, turning much colder overnight. It already is cold out there. Chilly midweek, but warmer by the time we get to Friday. 
Well, warm, we'll do 55 for your Friday, 52 on your Saturday, Easter Sunday, seasonably cool for this time of year. Average highs are right around 50, and we'll see those temperatures just a little bit cooler on Monday going into Tuesday with that weather system. That could bring some appreciable amounts of water to us as well with a bit of a mix at the nighttime hours and then during the morning hours as well. And then if you want some sunshine and warmer weather, we'll see that by the end of next week. For well over a century, Louisville Slugger has been synonymous with the national pastime, baseball. To celebrate, the Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory in Kentucky is unveiling a new temporary exhibit called The Brilliance of Bats. Sam Carter takes us inside. On Thursday, Major League Baseball will celebrate its 147th opening day. For the folks at the Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory, like marketing director Andrew Soliday, this is a rite of spring. It's a lot of excitement for us. Spring is in the air, trees are in bloom again. This opening day carries a greater significance than most for the Louisville Slugger Museum and Factory as it marks the 140th anniversary of the iconic Louisville Slugger baseball bat. To celebrate, the museum and factory are opening a new exhibit chronicling the rich history of the bat and its role in the national pastime. It dives into the kind of differences, the details, and just the, the subtle nuances between all of these bats that have been used throughout history. And we really just try to draw that parallel of just the unique connection that not only players, but really everyone has to this American icon. On Thursday, when players league-wide are swinging these bats for the first official time of the year, the museum will be throwing itself a bit of a birthday party. For Saladay, it's an opportunity for people to reconnect not just with baseball, but with each other and perhaps themselves. And whether you played it or you watched it, everyone's going to have that memory, that attachment to it um, that's going to be unique and personal to them. Major League Baseball has 15 games on tap for Thursday's opening day, and that includes the Brewers. They will travel to Queens, New York to face the Mets. First pitch is set for 12-10. You could have just stayed in New York then, right? <laughs> Coming up in sports, it's been over two weeks since Wisconsin skated. When Mike Hastings is hopeful his team can shake off the rust out east. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. A rookie stunt driver. Again. Will prove he's got what it takes in this year's most exciting Nissan sales event. Hurry into the Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event. Get 1.9% financing for 16 months on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Our record high energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today. Welcome to Badgerscape Design and Landscape. We offer a full range of landscaping services from design to maintenance. Our professional team is dedicated to meeting all your landscaping needs. Call us at 608-295-1446 or visit badgerscapedesignandlandscape.com. When you donate furniture, cabinets, and appliances to Habitat Restore, you make an impact on neighbors in your community. Profits generated from Restore sales help provide safe and secure housing for hardworking families across Dane County. Donate to make a difference today. You made a cow. Actually, it's a piggy bank. My inspiration to start saving. How about a more solid way to save? I'm listening. Well, BMO helps get your savings habit into shape with a cash reward every month you save. Cash, cash reward? And there's a cash bonus when you open a new checking account to get you started. Wow. Anything you can't do? Mugs. BMO! This week at hy V, get ham for the same price as in 2005. That's the same price as nearly 20 years ago. Just $1.49 a pound. Get Cook's Super Trim Ham Portions for just $1.49 a pound. That's right, just $1.49 a pound. 
plus other great deals on everything you need for Easter. All week long, only at hy V. Washington has become corrupt. Career politicians sell themselves to special interests and end up working for them and not you. I've worked hard, been fortunate. I don't need their special interest money and I won't take it. If you decide to elect me as your next senator, I'll donate my entire salary to a Wisconsin charity every year. I'm Eric Covey. I can't be bought and I'll put you and our country first. I approve this message. A rookie stunt driver. Again. Will prove he's got what it takes in this year's most exciting Nissan sales event. Hurry into the Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event. Get a low $2.99 per month lease on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. The Badger men's hockey team has had a long break since they lost in the Big Ten tournament. Wisconsin hasn't played a game since March 10th. But that will change this week in Providence. Mike Hastings' squad will face off against the defending national champs on Friday. And Quinnipiac is as good as advertised. They have 26 wins. They're the regular season conference champs. And they have experience on the big stage. So the Badgers know they're going to have to earn it once the puck drops. We're just going to have to be as prepared as we can be and then uh, try and take advantage of some of the rest and get that rust eliminated as quick as possible because one thing that Quinnipiac has a history of doing for the most part is they're, they're quick starters. The details that they get in control, they're buttoned down. Um, so there's, there's, you know, they're going to do what they do. We have to go out and do what we do. On Sunday, Connor Asijan announced he's transferring from Wisconsin. Today, Greg Gard's roster was dealt another departure. A.J. Storrs opted to enter the NBA draft, but will maintain his college eligibility, meaning the sophomore guard will go through the draft process and then decide his future after receiving feedback from the next level. Storr led the Badgers in scoring this season, averaging just under 17 points per game. The deadline to return to school is June 16th. Another Meanwhile, on the women's side, after erasing a 19-point deficit, the Badgers advanced to the Super 16 of the WNIT. Wisconsin will host Illinois State on Thursday. It's the first time in 13 years the UW women are playing postseason basketball. Bucks taking on the LeBron-less Lakers. This one was a wild one. 17 seconds left in overtime. The Deer work it to Dame. And he splashes one home to give Milwaukee a two-point lead. Now, L.A. would tie it up on free throws, so to double OT we go. And Austin Reeves plays the villain. That triple would be the winner. Bucks fall 128 to 124. Spring practice has already begun for the Badger football team, but it's never too early to start looking at future schedules. Wisconsin announced a home-and-home -home series with Cal. So the Badgers will travel to Berkeley in 2029 before hosting the Golden Bears in 2030. UW 1-5 all-time against Cal with that lone win coming back in 1946. And the Packers added a kicker to their roster, and you might recognize him. Former Viking Greg Joseph has signed on to give Anders Carlson some competition. Joseph holds the Minnesota franchise record for longest field goal and the NFL record for most game-winning field goals in a season. We're back after this. It's Thursday, one day only. Earn a 40-cent V fuel saver for every $60 you spend. That's a 40-cent fuel saver for every $60, Thursday only, and only at hy V. For the second year in a row, Chevy Equinox has been ranked by J.D. Power number one in new vehicle quality for compact SUVs. In other words, it's really good right from the start. Chevy Equinox. Do that again. Connected by OnStar. Qualified lessees can get this Equinox for $2.69 a month. See your Badgerland Chevy dealer today. This month, we're looking for 200 homeowners interested in getting a new fence. We're offering up to $1,000 off, plus an upgrade of up to 10 free solar caps. Our fences outlast wood 3 to 1 and are backed by our extensive lifetime warranty. Call now or visit the website for your new fence today. Introducing Gloria's Mexican Restaurant, your destination for authentic Mexican cuisine and craft cocktails. 
We're proud to offer delicious dishes made from the best ingredients. Whether a family meal or a special event, Glorious has you covered. Visit us today. Marlene is proud to celebrate 120 years as a family-owned and operated lumber yard in Wisconsin. Throughout the years, Marlene Lumber and Homeworks has expanded its product lines to include cabinetry, windows, doors, and much more. Our showrooms in Janesville and Madison are state-of-the-art. They're ready for you to see the many ways your building or remodeling vision can come to reality with the help of our in-house designers. Marlene Lumber and Homeworks, for all your building and remodeling needs. Marlene.com, celebrating 120 years. You've got this. You didn't think your sister would take you up on the dog sitting offer, but here you are. Barriers, purchased. Doggy distractions, no expense spared. Yeah, you've got this. Just like Associated Banks got you with $50 overdraft gray zone. So when you have to make a purchase or seven to prepare, you can be sure we're looking out for you. So you can look out for him. You've got this with Associated Bank. When we tell people it took 138 iterations to refine the Tiguan chassis, they say, oh, cool. But when we tell them it also took our engineers 189 pizzas, 22 birthdays, 4,005 miles commuted through 13 thunderstorms, 16 neglected haircuts, 52 all-nighters, and 19 nightmares about chassis, they usually go, oh, wow. The meticulously refined Tiguan. Hop in. It's a VW. Get 0% APR financing or a $2,000 customer bonus on a new 2024 Tiguan during the Volkswagen 75th anniversary sales event. This Thursday, one day only, earn a 40 cent high V fuel saver for every $60 you spend. That's a 40 cent fuel saver for every $60, Thursday only, and only at High V. Susan Simon, News 3 Now at 4 and 5, weekdays moving forward. And Alex is back with a chilly forecast. <laughs> yeah, speaking of chilly, let's look at wind chills. Feels like the teens across portions of southwestern Wisconsin. So it's a cold one out there. We're going to wake up to temperatures in the low to mid 20s and we'll be lucky to get 40 on your Wednesday. But good news is we start to warm up by the time we get to the weekend with some rain chances Friday night going into Saturday and more rain chances Monday going into Tuesday. But we need the rain. So we can we take do. the rain. All right. Thank you, Alex. Sure. And thank you all for joining us. Do something good and we'll see you back here tomorrow.